And this doesn't have vigilance because so we can't lose life because we don't have scroll. So we get as much life as we can. Make the channeler as big as possible. Oh, it'll have menace. Yeah, that's fine. Then. So we block with um, anything else plus the 13 12. And hope that that gets there. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Ruckus. And today we are absolutely crushing top 100 mythic rank standard with. Mono White Life Gain, the fresh release of Foundations. We now have Linden, the Steadfast Queen, and Ajani's Pride Mate back in standard. Let me tell you, they crush it. These are really good cards to have back in standard. Mono White Aggro has not been a thing for a little while, and we definitely have it back here today. Deck construction wise, we're running a ton of one drops because uh, that really facilitates the life gain strategy. We got four copies of the Hinterland Sanctifier, the best of the one drops here. It is a one mana one two, which is a great rate. And whenever another creature you control enters, you gain a life, does all the things. You slam them some one, you pop off from there. It's very good. The next best one drop is probably the Ruin Lurker Bat. It is a one mana one one with flying and lifelink, just like the Hawk, but also has this extra line of text at the beginning of your end step. If you descended this turn, scry one. That little bit of extra value really does matter when your opponent you know go for the throw it's your creature and you get to scry one and put that next land on the bottom and keep um progressing your game state forward it's really good that extra line of hex does matter hawk is the next best one probably and then lastly is the vanguard yes if your opponent just does nothing turns one turns two and turn three and you have three creatures and you get this life gain trigger before combat then you do get to hit harder before combat with the pride mate and the channeler so i get it but if your opponent's doing nothing for the first three turns, what are they doing? What are they doing? Right? There's going to be cut down in one. There's going to be go for, go for throw it on two. This is much better as a one of, as kind of like a turn three, turn four, turn five top deck. Put it down. Hopefully some creatures out and you get that before combat trigger, which is objectively better. It's just not as consistent as having these lifelink hawks. The last of the one drop slots goes to Skrelv, which does not gain you life, but is so big towards the strategy. Obviously, the thing that everyone knows it for is you can give one of your creatures hexproof. It's very good, right? Give your channeler hexproof, give your pride mate hexproof, give your lid in hexproof, you know, make it um, unkillable via your opponent's removal spells and such. But the reason I really thought to put in the deck, because I could see justifying otherwise slamming more hawks to keep the synergy um, alive with lifelink, is the fact that it allows you to lose life. Because what that does is it allows you to turn on the first effect of the essence channeler. As long as you've lo lost life this turn, essence channeler has flying and vigilance. It's very hard to do that on your own turn in mono white, um, but if you can, you can turn your 13. 13 channeler which your opponent is planning to block and give it flying and vigilance out of nowhere which is huge obviously you can also just give one of your 13 13 creatures um unblockability versus a certain color so i think scroll definitely makes the deck between one and three copies i think two is about right um we are drawing lots of cards off of nuring innocence we are pseudo drawing lots of cards off of knight errant so you don't need too too many i think two is about right certainly very powerful and it's very cool to have that life loss effect to turn on the essence channeler also just note when this thing dies you can double all its counters on something else so you want to watch till the end of the video we have an epic game against boros uh where we it's a, it's a really big battle state and it kind of goes crazy and essence channeler uh is a huge part of that some plus healer very cool card two mana three one with lifelink it's great right like that does all the things it's aggressive it hits hard it has lifelink but when it enters, if it was kicked, you can return target non-land permanent with mana value 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is huge. That means turn 4, you can basically get back a channeler or a pride mate that was picked off on turn 2 by your opponent's go for the throat or whatever. Or you can even get back shelters by ghosts. So, I really like this card. Um, I don't know that you need much more than 2 copies. It also has 3 power, so it doesn't work with Enduring Innocence. But the ability to bring back one of your key cards later in the game seems awesome. So, totally happy with 2 of these in there. You could put in 4, but I just think it's really important to have a critical mass of 1 drops that gain you life. Not only to facilitate your pride mates and channelers on two, but also to get that turn three or turn two knight errant. Uh, probably turn three knight errant, which is also very powerful. Linden is a boss. Attack with everything. She has vigilance. Gain a ton of life. Get a ton of triggers on the channeler and the pride mate. That's base of the deck. Um, some other cards to talk about. I ended up cutting um, some creature lands from the deck. Like you could... Um, you could throw in Mistress Foundry or... Uh, I don't know why it's not letting me show this card. Or the new uh, creature land. Why does it not let me target? Soulstone Sanctuary. But it's just so important to hit your one drops on two or even double spell, uh, you know, multiple one drops um, that all cost a single white. So I think it's almost not worth it. Like a single Mistress Foundry does let you pick off uh, Liliana on turn three if your opponent slams it. But you need triple white for Linden anyway. So I think I'm okay going zero creature lands. The only other card I really considered, I think I just cut it from the deck, is this new uh, this new life gain card from Foundations. It's like when you gain life, you put a uh, you put a, a counter on it, and whenever you put a counter on it, you uh, draw a card. So it's seems like a cool draw engine let's see if we can find it real quick uh where is this thing exemplar of light yeah but the problem is it's just so expensive like i'm really happy running 22 lands i'm really happy running a ton of one drops that facilitate our true drops and then instead of having a four mana card we can just run four night errands and basically do the same thing so i think that is where you want to be with this deck it's awesome enjoy the gameplay let's dive right in 
on the play, I don't think this is a keep. This feels very sus. Let's mulligan this. Much better. Uh, maybe just go back to land. Everything else looks pretty good. Let's keep... I think let's put back the Mistress Foundry. And we'll try the Hinterland Sanctifier. One mana, one, two. Rabbit Cleric. Whenever another creature you control enters, you gain one life. Boros. Okay. Let's see how they like our life gain deck. Should we just get the Essence Challenger stacking? I think so. And the next turn, we can do just a giant Knight Errant turn. And that'll hopefully completely obliterate Mono Red. I don't know the build to do much against that. The blocks here. They need to kill one of our creatures right now, or things are going to get a lot worse for them. Oh, we gain flying until end of turn. Oh, that's game. Game's over. Let's go. Creature. Creature. Life, life. Okay, you don't have vigilance, do you? Well, only if you lost life that turn. Alright, we'll get the Night Errant down. That should about do it. I don't think they can possibly come back from this. Choose up to two. We'll take one of these. Alright. The queen is back. We have an 8-7. Goodness gracious. We are ready to go here. Double strike mouse. Doing the best you can. And we slam Linden next turn and just go absolutely crazy here. Uh, We could block. I don't think they can kill us from here. I really don't care. They can have the Night Aaron if they want. I, I really don't care. Maybe there's some crazy combo I don't know about yet. We can slam Lennon and attack with everything. Like, that should almost be game. Yeah, that's fine. Double strike away. It's okay. Okay, to 19. And I think we just play Linden and go crazy. I don't think I can really outrace that. They could Lightning Strike her immediately. But I think that's okay. Let's see if they let us move to combat. Trigger, trigger. Essence Channeler. Going nuts here. Okay. Attack with four creatures. Gain four life. Oh, baby. Mono White Life Gain is so back. <laughs> All right, casual 14, 13, two draw, no problem. When it takes 17, does not scoop, we're at 25. We're at 26. Again, we're happy to block with Linden. Not too concerned about finding lethal. I, I don't think they can get us from 26. Okay, that's a card. All right, let's see Mono Red do it. Let's see Mono Red go 26 to zero. If anyone can do it, it's Boros Enchantments. I'm gonna be so pissed if they do. <laughs> Okay, one last card. What is it? I don't count lethal yet. I couldn't even see what that was. I count 20. Meh? Sure. No blocks. Take 20. It's a lot. Almost got there. Scoop. All right. What a great game of magic. Oh, it's good. It's good to have a counter to mono red. On the draw, this hand looks great. I don't know if we need Resplendent Angel in the deck. Five life in a turn is really quite a lot. It could just be any other random three drop. There's like the the angel that like it's like a three mana two one draw draw a card gain a life like that might just be better. All right, so we begin here, and we'll see if this is a Selesnia lockdown sunfall. No, nah, three colors still could be. Channel first, just in case they have like Elspeth's might. Group migration. Okay, so we need to put on a lot of pressure. And if they turn three lockdown, it'll be pretty sad. They didn't go fetch that second white, though. So maybe they don't have it, or they don't need it, or they don't main deck lockdown. We're going to find out real soon. It's not second white. So now we're just thinking about Sunfall. And Sunfall could hit as soon as next turn. So this isn't a bad turn to get down the Angel for that reason. 
Well, actually, sorry, I was thinking about lockdown. Um, damn. Do you spend anything here? I think we just do one angel and we reload with the channelers next turn. It's tough. We'll see if they have turn five um, Sunfall or not. But I think we need to keep putting on pressure. I don't think doing nothing is also a great option. There's no land yet. Ah, oh, there's no land at all, actually. Interesting. So it's just like a binding turn for them. Okay. I mean, I think we just push. If they didn't hit land this turn, who's to say they're going to hit land next turn? Um, I guess we could go double channel here. I mean, at this point, we're really overextending. We're saying, all right, they didn't have Sunfall last turn. They didn't hit land. Let's hope they don't do it again this turn. And just try to push the rest of the way. Before they can mount a defense. Two, I don't have Knight Errant. Or any of the draw engine spells. Here we go. It's a good chunk of damage. There's the binding for one. They still could have one more binding to go. But at least there's no draw with the beanstalk. Get lost there. Okay. Well, it's not Land Sunfall yet. It's another Overlord. All right, well, they have the next land. I don't think we can kill them this turn, though. Spread out the counters a bit. That could be relevant. I think you keep that. And I don't think we're winning against Sunfall. So I think we're just pushing as hard as we can here. I guess this would threaten lethal. Okay. Let's see what you got. Exactly lethal. All right, I mean, on our side, we're fortunate they didn't have Sunfall, but hey, they don't deserve it every time either, I would say. On the play, we don't have any payoffs yet, but um, I think it's fine. I'm keep this. Guland, Sanctifier. But ideally we hit one of those two drops that grows every turn. Or Knight Errant. There are lots of good cards to draw. Or even the draw engine. Pretty much anything other than what we have in hand. Um, we only have facilitators, but not the payoffs. That's fine. Against... Oh, baby, let's go. Alright, you're in the wrong matchup. That's a great card for us, actually. Well, I think they've already lost. I think they've picked the wrong color to go to town today. Get him. Next turn, Hawk Knight Errant. Or maybe just Linden if we had the land. Maybe Hawk Knight Errant is better. What does that do? Let's see. Okay. I guess it's, um, Hawk Knight Errant then. If it wasn't game before, feels like game now. Cool. Payoff and draw engine? Yeah. I like it. Um, we almost don't need the draw engine, really. I mean, I really don't think they can beat us from here. I think this is honestly just fine. Both channelers seems good to me. Sunblast Healer is cool. Um, I'm thinking we can kick it and get back a... Uh... Alright, discard a card draw. What does this do? I'll have to draw a discard. I really don't think they can get us. Um, we could, like, kick it and get back a um, Shelter by Ghosts. So I think a two of in there seems pretty fun. Alright, we got one of these down before combat. Gain a life. Swing a bunch of damage. Bunch of lifelink. Down to 11. Gain three more life off the flyers. Just ridiculous. We have completely nullified Bolt Wave. They should scoop. I do not think they can win from here. Um, there is a new red sweeper. It's like three damage to all creatures, but not planeswalkers, which is cool because that means... There it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool because that means we can actually play some uh, big red stuff with planeswalkers and actually have a sweeper. But you couldn't do before. It was so awkward. You couldn't run the three three mana Brotherhood's end because it hit your, it would hit your own Planeswalkers, which kind of sucked. But now we can uh, do that. So I'm looking forward to playing that deck soon. On the draw, looks fantastic here. Sixth Fire, Pride Mate, Innocence, hitting our land drops. We got a Mistress Foundry in case there's a Liliana, which is good. Let's see if they kill it immediately. They do. They really don't want to see that. <laughs> They're not even going to see our two drop. That's aggressive. I would call that pretty aggressive. So we'll play Foundry here so that we're ready for the turn three Liliana. And I guess we'll drop the, just drop the Pride Mate. And we're hitting a lot of lands. Maybe we go Innocence on three, two. Hopefully they don't have an Anoint with Affliction. 
Or if they do, they burn it now. Slasher, okay. Sure. I think it's Enduring Innocence here. I don't really want to... Tree the Primate. We can block with Enduring Innocence really well. To the Slasher, that'd be great. And then it just becomes an enchantment. We keep the effect, keep the draw engine. Just depends if they have Anoint with Affliction or not. Alright, I think this is a fine block on our side. Really quite okay with that. We save like 11 points of damage. And we keep the draw engine, and we trigger the Pride Mate. Alright, next removal spell comes down. That's okay. And a free booger. Start here. The only triggers once each turn. That's interesting. We could kick that next turn and get back um the Pride Mate. So I think let's hold on to that. Yeah, if we're gonna do that, then we can play out both the bats here safely. Because um, when we get back the Pride Mate, it'll be a 2-2, two -two, and that'll trigger the Innocence, so we don't need to save a 1-drop just to achieve that. Alright, loading up here. We could probably dump a bat to the, to the Slasher and be okay as well. Demon. Alright, this will test the deck. We're gonna need a Shelter by Ghosts. Or a crap ton of life gain. We could out life gain the Archfiend. It is possible. I do think we chump. I think it's just this. We do lose two life. Ooh, that's pretty good too. I kind of think you just kick the Sunblessed Healer though. And get back Pride Mate, get it growing again. We can't hit a creature removal off Knight Errant with this deck. As it's currently configured. Plus, keeping the bat around to chump block is pretty good. Alright, let's do it like this. Let's go ahead and kick it. And that is three power. So that doesn't trigger the innocence. But we go get the pride mate. And that should trigger the innocence, so we keep that draw engine going. And we just need to outstall the Archfiend. Now we could tap everything and play this and eat six this turn. It's not the worst. We tried the Slasher, unless they pick off our only blocker with removal, which is pretty likely. So we just wait. We chump block the Archfiend, and then we can trade off the healer with the Slasher and just slow that down. And then get a big Knight Errant into like a two power creature, keep drawing. That'll double the damage, but I think that's okay. Let's see who gets in there. Yeah, so this is an easy chump here for me. And just the 3 1 lifelink trade is also fine with me. I don't know what this guy's doing. Um. I guess we can get the primate here. That's fine with me. They could go land. I mean, they don't. I don't know why they attacked with. Oh, they want the scry. Yeah, that makes sense. We could have left that guy. Let the guy go through. So they have a couple turns left to hit with the archfiend. One to the bottom is nice. They do get the treasure. Pass to us. I think we're starting with the knight errant. We could play the innocence first, actually. And still Knight Errant, and still had a Flyer to block the Archfiend. Ooh. I mean, we could just take the Alcazaz and swing the life. That's also very good, I think. Let's try that. That's a huge life swing. Makes it really hard for them to win with the Archfiend. So we take you. And we just swing for 9. Drop them to 11, and more importantly, we go up to 30. And only have a couple more turns with the Archfiend here. But yeah, we didn't need to block the Freebooter. We should have let the Freebooter go through. They got a scry and a treasure out of that, which was unnecessary. Alright, so fine. Remove spell there. We lose two first, and then they get to double the damage. So they hit us for 12. So now we really need a Flyer. Maybe two Flyers. Unholy Annex. Or they need to kill their own Archfiend before they lose the game. There's a Flyer. That's huge. We kind of want you around to block. So I think we just tap everything else. To guarantee we get there. We could play you first to draw. Just in case that changes anything. I'm pretty confident. We'll play the Knight Errant. Alright, more land. More land. Okay, that's fine. I don't think we need the Mishra's Foundry to block anything. So let's do this, and uh, let's just make sure we tap this.
Great. Some cards to play. None of them flyers. We hope the hawk um hope the hawk lives. Well, if they hit removal, I think we do just lose. We only have one flying blocker. Hawk is um living on a dream here. So let's find out if they hit removal. It'd be 16 plus 2 from the death of the, the hawk. So we would lose here if they do have removal. Beseech, they can go get any card, but they and they have the treasure because we gave them the stupid free border. Okay. So they should get a removal spell here. Um Okay, or the combo. Alright. Alright. Good game. It happens. Good game. On well, the draw looks great. Pragmate on two. Knight Errant probably on three. Just with all the one drops we have. Okay. So control or um Controller Oculus. Ooh, enchantments. Okay. So we probably go Pride Mate here and just get it growing. And then Knight Errant next turn. Okay, it's a 3 3. Get lost. Dead. To 19. I think we kind of want to get Enduring Innocence down here. We can't Knight Errant yet, but we can Knight Errant next turn. Yeah, I think getting that draw is good. Is there some stick for one? What might you be playing? There is stick for one. They're just... We didn't end our turn. I don't know why you felt the need to do that right there. Does that change anything? I wasn't really expecting that. I mean, that might hit us pretty hard this coming turn, but I think it's um, Enduring Innocence still. And it's a good blocker. If we need to pitch it to block a big giant tamer. Um, with like Ethereal Armor, we could do that. Alright, they're going wide. Um... No, we don't need to pitch the Innocence just yet. Because it does power up the Knight Errant. Down to 16, though. Gotta watch that life total. Roland is fine for now. Let's begin here. For one mana, can you kill the Innocence? Another rescue. Right now. I don't really know why they're doing that immediately. Hmm. It's kind of a lot of pressure. If they, if they um, shelter next turn and we tap everything for Knight Errant... It's like 11 damage. It's a lot. It's a lot of pressure. We'd have a lot on the way back with Linden next turn, though. I think we do play it all out in Knight Errant. I mean, I don't think they'll be able to pump the whole board, per se. So, here we go. You're good. Another Knight Errant is also good. Alright. Well, we're happy to jump block with the Knight Errant. Caretaker's Talent, okay. It's a lot of gremlins. Level up, copy a gremlin. Okay. They already got the draw triggered this turn. I don't think they'll attack. Oh, they do. They throw away one of the gremlin tamers, sure. Oh, we have a lot of life gain coming. This could be a slam Linden. Just recoup a ton of life. I could see that being the play. I think that's it. That'd be a big swing for us, I think. Okay, back up Linden. That's good because we can block with her this turn pretty safely. Alright. Do we want an Iron? I don't really think so. I think basically we attack all here. And get the Linden trigger. And just go crazy. Recruit a lot of that life. Make the Essence Channeler massive. They can't block the Flyers. They can pick off the Innocence, but it goes to an enchantment anyway. Scoop. Alright. Very nice. What are we ranking up to here? 92 Mythic. On the play, we keep this for sure. Land Bat. Land a Johnny. Maybe no stick. Alright, 2 mana 3-3. Three, three. We could Knight Errant this turn. 
instead of growing the pride mate. They might even let us do it. If we're sneaky about it, if they don't sense it coming. If they pick up something now, they don't get the night errand, which would be sad. They do, they see it coming. Alright, we'll drop off the bat here. Too bad. Got too greedy. But we did descend this turn. So we get a little bit of scry off the, the bat. Could do all that before combat. I think that's fine with me. Let's give it a go. Maybe they have a counter spell. I don't know. Okay, they do. To 11. How much are we worrying about the turn 5 sweep? This bat's actually really good. That uh, Descended Scry is huge. I haven't seen that happen yet. Uh, it's so much valuable. So much value. We just scryed two lands to the bottom that we're going to draw over the next couple turns. Alright, bat takes the Night Errant. We'd have to top deck a shelter or force them to block here. Still have two men open. They pick off the Pride Mate as well. Okay, this gets the Vanguard triggering at least. Gain a life, make it a 2 2. Keep pushing. But we're out of gas for now. No blocks. That's a card. Play it before combat. Trigger up. Trigger up. Swing. Okay, they can block two things if they really want. To seven. Channels of five five. Uh I don't know. We have some good cards. I don't think that one's it. It's better than a land, but not by much. I don't think that's it. I think we can push for better. Pride mate again can come down before combat. Trigger, trigger. Keep pushing here. Each player draws a card. We draw two. Or rather, because we drew one, they get to draw the second one. And we'll see if they hit removal for the channeler. Nope. Drop to one. Linden on the way. Three lethal threats. Both the attack with the bat, just two. That is okay. Alright, so they have enough blockers now. So someone is getting sacrificed to the slasher. If only we could lose life this turn. Yeah, I guess it's Knight Aaron here. We could drop Linden as well if we really wanted to. It's not bad to cast as many things per turn as possible. Because ultimately we just need to sneak through lethal. Yeah, because we might whiff. Okay, resolves. We don't have any trample or... We know way to lose life for the channeler. Attack all's not bad. <laughs> Attack all's pretty good. It might be better than Knight Errant, actually. I mean, Knight Errant gives him the chance to draw into the sweeper. I think this is probably better. So stick is weird because... I mean, I guess they have one removal spell that'll hit the channeler, and they're just trying to figure out should they do it before the Linden triggers, and they decided not doesn't matter because either we kill the creature or not. Now, it's interesting. If we could figure out a way to lose life in this deck, just turning on flying could be kind of amazing. Or we could just splash in Skrelv and uh, have the ability to make things unblockable. I do think Skrelv could be really good in this deck. Sack token, draw a card. All right, well, they're looking for that sweep. Sweep give us double Knight Errant's back. Interesting. Uh, they trade with the smaller Pride Mate and leave us with the bigger Channeler. Um, that's weird, right? Is there a reason to do that? Okay, back up to two life. We're still presenting lethal. Sack you, sure. Still presenting lethal. Scoop, okay. All right, good game. On the draw versus Mick Send It. Uh, yeah, that's good enough for me.
Molt is six. It's mono red. I love to see it. And we have Shelter by Ghosts, which is the best card against mono red. So I'm pretty good about our odds here. As long as we're just careful about using Shelter and don't get blown out underneath by a Shocker Lightning Strike. Like Shelter onto Johnny Pride into a single swing. Could be game. Now they're actually Boros Enchantments here. Do they even run? I guess they run their own Shelter by Ghosts. I think it's still a Johnny's Pride Mate here. And we could even go like Sanctifier, Bat. Um, I guess we can attack here. I don't think we're blocking with this guy. It's Night Errant. I think all of that's pretty good. All right, there comes the first shelter. We could shelter their shelter or um, just wait till we hit that fourth land. They're all tapped out. We could shelter the shelter. Yeah, I think sheltering the shelter is good enough here. Okay. Submit one. Get a creature. Gain a life. Play another Sanctifier. Gain another life. Hit for two lifelink. Back up to 17. Gain a life. And we have a nice 5-5 five, five blocker. If they stall, it's huge. We could have a crazy Linden turn. We could have a Knight Errant turn. Kind of depends what we feel like we need here. Attack all button. Okay, so probably rage and stuff. Um, I mean, we're pretty good on card draw. Just by using the Knight Errant. Uh, I guess they really want to target the Challenger here to get that, that extra draw as well. So what do they have? They have at least one Rage, right? That's about it. I think picking off the card draw is fine by me. I don't want to lose a Sanctifier. So I think it's just this. Let's see what they got. Two cards left. Plus one extra off the Challenger. Okay, so now it's a 4-4. Four, four. They hit a land. And that's it, actually. Well, that's pretty big. I think at that point, maybe just drop Linden. And just bury them in life gain. 85 Mythic, let's go. On the draw, we only have one planes, but other than that, it's a good hand, for sure. Mono blue, do not have triple white for Linden yet. We'll see how that goes. But Pride Mate into Shelter could be good against a lot of things. Eh, do nothing here. We don't have to give him the Pride Mate just yet. Just wait a second. Maybe we just wait a second. Let's attack. Are you gonna smite it? No. Okay. Well, we don't have the white, so we can't um, we can't double spell with these one drops this turn. Paying the price of the Mistress Foundry. Nothing there at all. No counterspell, no removal. Could be turn three lockdown, or could just be really slow here. That's a good draw. Sanctify before combat. Bat before combat. They didn't have anything last turn. I feel like they'll have it this turn. Swing for four. You got anything? What's going on in that hand? Maybe they have the new turn four sweeper. And they're just straight up chilling. Killing the demolition. Uh, killing the, the Mistress Foundry is not that bad. Because we actually get the white source we need anyway. Okay. This feels like a turn four sweep to me. Which kind of feels like game. But we'll see how it goes. There are several new sweepers. Um, all of which I think are pretty good. Alright. Let's see it. That does not feel like turn four sweep. Okay, so we're in it. Another turn then. We don't have a lot of firepower, but at least we can cast Linden now. We do descend. Yeah, that's great. Let's keep that. Big threat. Yes, keep it twice. Thank you. These bats are awesome. The descend off the bats really good. All right, we play you before combat. Manual tap for deduce. I still think we're going to see some sweepers this game. And the hard counter. Well, the uh, pay three counter. Okay. Drop to 15. Again, they must not have a sweeper. Otherwise, they wouldn't be pulling all these tricks. Vanguard's okay. We just slam Linden here. Sack a clue. Countered again. Again, they don't have the sweeper. Hit him for three more. Down to 12. Okay. With the Vanguard. Shelter not doing a whole lot this matchup. At some point we could just use it to hit plus one power. But I don't think we're there yet. 
Get the combat trigger, a little bit of life. Down to nine. Okay. I don't know. I feel like we're not going to get there this game. Too much draw power. Surely they'll hit something relevant at some point. I think I might take out the Mistress Foundry after this match. Oh, there it is. So if we hit a creature, we can shelter the lockdown. So it's not game over yet. It's a land, though. But I won't scoop here. Yeah, I think any Foundry... That's pretty brutal to not be able to double spell in the first couple turns. Um, I mean, the, really the highest upside is that you can pick off Liliana. But maybe it's not worth the small cost. Maybe drop it from two to one copy. That's a card. It's not a creature. Let's see. Five mana, five, five. Flying, first strike, lifelink. Other angels you control get plus one, plus one lifelink. This feels like he really was trying to play blue eye control, but he couldn't help himself playing this. Because this just gets picked off by a single removal spell. Yeah, I mean, I guess we slam this. And, uh... See if we can shelter either the Dawnbringer or the Lockdown. We whiff? Yeah, because we didn't tap anything for that. Oof. Four, five, six, seven. Flash, lifelink, flying. You can't lose the game. Your opponents can't win the game. Okay. I'm not really sure what to make about that. I don't really know what to do now, to be honest. Is taking any of these helpful? Uh, I guess we Knight Errant or Knight Errant. Attacking does not seem very productive into the lifelink. Let's see what we can get here. I don't really know what we're doing against the Herald at this point. Scroll's cool. I like that card. I'll play it out. But now what? Okay. So, they have to kill their own Eternal of Dawn, right? Or maybe they, like, Soul Partition their own Dawn? Is that the play? I don't... They get Lost Ark Creature. They keep the Eternal Dawn around. I don't really know what they're going to do with this card. Maybe they, like, bounce it or flicker it. Negative seven, but... Oh, your opponents can't win the game. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not a boomer. I haven't... <laughs> Um, no, no, no. We can definitely lose the game. That's like the heads you win, tails I lose thing. Uh, okay. That's fine. I mean, I don't think we're really gonna win that game anyway. So this is actually one of the weakest hands we've had so far. Um, I think I'd be fine to mulligan it. We just do nothing on two. We're really slow. And Vagrod's our worst one drop. It's better on like three or four or five or something. This already looks significantly better. Let's keep it. Putting away shelter seems weird. I think we kind of just put away Linden. Go multiple one drops. Keep a removal spell. Like, we don't have any payoffs for Linden to really shine. It's white. It's white scavenger. Alright, I think it is just the Sanctifier first. And then maybe, like, Vanguard Skrelv. Get that Skrelv in early, because we might want to, at some point, to protect a shelter. Challenger to the face. Okay. Land is okay. Yeah, let's set up Skrelv for this turn. And then uh, hopefully we can protect a Shelter by Ghosts. Alright. Gain a life. Move to combat. Get the trigger. Swing for one. Alright, so they're hoping they tap out here. So we can Shelter safely under a Shard Mage's Rescue. Or something like that. Hopefully they'll, they go Bananas on the Challenger and leave it unprotected. Banana Part 1. But I need all three lands tapped. I think we'll probably have to go for it anyway. Oh, they're coming in hot here. So rage is going everywhere. I mean, it's no blocks here. They're just going to rage up. It doesn't matter. I think you just eat this. If we're lucky, they double rage. And they completely tap out. And then we can shelter for free. Let's see all the rages. Rage number one. And I really want to see rage number two come out. Come on. Ooh, they leave open that one white. That's not good. Well, that kind of sucks. Um, if we really think they have it, we could take the ethereal armor. <sighs> Which sucks. Or we can just go for it. I mean, we could check for stick here by attacking first. I think that's pretty reasonable. So we get the trigger. There does appear to be stick. I mean, they could have anything. Can we win if we just take the Ethereal Armor is the question. 
They could be on full control. There's just no way to know. So if we're wrong and they keep the challenger. I mean, even the trample is more devastating than the ethereal armor. We could chump block. We could chump block. But they could also just be holding the monstrous rage. I think we're taking the armor here. And we'll chump block with the bat as needed. I think this shuts down a lot of damage. It's tough. You don't know. Then maybe they have the rescue. Maybe they don't. We just don't know. Sometimes people don't understand this and they target the challenger anyway for hexproof because it's hard to tell what we're targeting or they're, they're confused. But we keep scroll to protect the vanguard and we're down to 11 and we have a good amount of lifelink on the way back. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. Suspiciously leaving white open still. There's the rescue. I imagine they did have it. So we just can't block the trampler, but we can block anything else with the bat. Another rage, but they're out of land, hopefully. Okay. Put it all on the trampler. Makes sense. Spam the attack all button. Drop to two. Okay. Drop to two. Now what? Can we possibly win from here? If we hit another... Um, Ghost off the top. We could win. It's a lot to ask for. We don't get there. I feel like we cannot win here. Gain a life. You can basically get in there. Because I don't really want to trade you off anyway. We can't block a Skrelv. And they basically can't target us with anything, right? They're just all enchantments. So I don't know if there's even a reason to hold back Skrelv. I guess they could hit the, the rescue. The, the ghosts. Get him to 10. We leave back two chump blocks. And maybe the innocence can draw us into more cards. But it's pretty close to being dead here. We'll see how well they top deck. If they, you know, give challenger whatever flying or whatever other bullshit they have, then it's probably just game. Yeah, it was a good level of bullshit. So now he is menace. We have to double block that if we can. Feeling like that's game. We'll get a little bit of life off the Innocence block. More counters go there. More target goes there. They hit Shelter by Ghost. They have the white. So that's, that's game. There's no way that's not game. Unless they fumble the Shelter and target. I guess we can block with Skrelv. We can we can um, Hexproof against Shelter with Skrelv. But still, uh, it's too much. Too much damage. Too much prowess. There's no way to do it. So they have to target Skrelv here. Nope. That doesn't work. We can't block a scrub anyway, but it's just so much. We'll play the Hexproof against white. So we go block, block on the Menace and take, go up two, basically. Um, and then just take the rest. So that's game. We go up to 10 and then we take 12. So we did our best, but uh, yeah, good game. They did have the rescue into the ghost. So there's not really anything we could have done that turn. On the play, it's a little slow. I think I'll still keep it. They're much better opening hands, though. But um, I think it's much worse against aggro. But against like any kind of control thing, Innocence is very good. If it's a long game, we'll be happy we kept the Innocence around. Land Bat. It's Mono Red. That's a fantastic troll. Before combat. And hit it for one lifelink. Very fortunate draw there. So now we can either Knight Errant or Innocence this turn. Double Strike Mouse with Boros. We can put on a lot of pressure just by slamming Lind in here as well. It makes a Johnny huge every turn. I think I like that the most of all our options. Just anti mono red. Gain two life. Make everyone big. Gain more life on hit. A Johnny hitting like a truck. to 12, and we're up to 24. Okay. Hit the removal spell. Pride mate down. We still have pretty good attacks, and they don't really want to attack her themselves. I think I'd be happy to trade. I 
So we definitely get in with Linden because you have Vigilance. And then we could Knight Errant after the fact and probably still drop another card. Let's do that. Gain a single life. E3. Knight Errant up. And hopefully hit a one drop here. Yeah, some blessed healer isn't relevant yet. So we'll take these guys. Play the Hawk. Next turn, hopefully attack all. Get a huge amount of triggers on the channeler. Off the Linden um, attack trigger. Uh, I don't really think they can win from here. Right? Rage plus Shard Mage. Would be an extra four on top. They do have lifelink though. So this is gonna, they're going to rage and kill the Knight Errant. The question is how much we value keeping the Knight Errant around versus absorbing damage. Otherwise we take 12. I don't think we block here. Right, there's rage. Let's see if they shard mage rescue as well. Just make the biggest lifelink that they can. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so we take 12. We could have thrown Knight Errant under the bus, but we get to attack with it here. And both deal damage and gain life on the way back. So with 5 mana, we can't do everything. I think the Sanctifier is very good. I want to get the Channeler down this turn. Because one way to like basically destroy them very quickly. So let's do this. And I think we're just doing this. And no Innocence this turn. And just get as much life as we can. We can always block with Linden if we have to. But um, try to get this channeler absolutely massive. We could even block with the channeler if we think I can survive their double strike. Back to 11 with you. Channeler's a 9 8. It's a pretty good blocker. They already have the um, Monstrous Rage token, so it only gets another plus two. That's a big boy. All right, 8 8 double strike. I think we're blocking with everything here. Damn. So the worst they can do. Is another rescue, right? Because rage will fall off. So rage would be plus two. But a rescue would be also plus two because of ethereal armor. Yeah, I think they're both the same. So they're presenting lethal here. The question is just how to block. They'll kill whatever we block with. Linden gives the most life gain per turn. Essence Channeler is kind of a lethal threat. I think it's just you. They deal 20 damage, we take 18. Hopefully we math that out correctly. I don't think they can give more than plus two. Let's see if I'm wrong. It's either Rage or Shard Mage Rescue, right? And they already have the Monstrous token. There. Alright, they do nothing. To six. Six to twenty-seven. Okay. Well, we need a shelter off the top here. And if we tell that, we might still lose here. We definitely might still lose here. We might need to leave the channeler back to block I guess let's see if we can hit anything relevant on the top I don't think we really can though I count 24 damage on this back crack I'm just thinking sequencing wise I don't think we can get to lethal so I think we're doing it in this order to draw an extra card and see if that changes anything we do here not really I think we might be leaving the channeler back to block this turn Can't give it Vigilance. I mean, it's going to be huge. Hopefully, it can tangle with the Double Striker on the way back, I think. I think that's basically the play, because we don't have Lethal here. And this doesn't have Vigilance, because we can't lose life, because we don't have Skrull. So, we get as much life as we can. Make the Channeler as big as possible. Oh, it'll have Menace. Yeah, that's fine. So, we block with um, anything else plus the 13-12. And hope that that gets there. It's a 15-14. That's a lot. They need another Ethereal Armor to get through that, I think. Another land. Slick shot. Okay. That's not as scary, I don't think. Not yet. Maybe scarier next turn. But that might lose soon. Alright, Ruckus goes there. It's a 10 10 double strike menace. But that's not the end of the world. Okay. I mean, you're definitely going here. And I guess the innocents could basically go here just to. Do the whole chump block thing. And we can't block the flyer anyway. Because somebody has reach. So currently that's lethal. So I guess we drop the... I think that prevents lethal. Ooh. If they have the slick shot too. Now what? 
I think they have 26 damage presented. Yeah, I think it has to be this, actually. Because I think if they pump the mouse up by 2, by playing any enchantment, basically, and the slick shot also gets plus 2, then we actually need all of these blockers underneath the mouse, unfortunately. Yep, so there it is. So it's plus 2 on the show-off, and then another uh, plus 2 to plus 4, depending on how you count the double strike. So that's 29 damage presented. 24 plus 5. We drop to three. We do go up a couple off the life. They do lose all of that crap. It all falls off. Put his counters on target creature you control. Okay, maybe a life linker. All right, well, we just do our best here. Uh, I think it's the next channeler. We could do everyone except for the bat and hope they don't have more trample. Whew, okay. Up to 19. Trigger, trigger. We have the bat back to block. It depends if they have trample or menace, though. 19 is not too far for mono red to get in a single turn, sadly. So we're not out of the not out of the woods yet. Let's see if they have the next ghost. Take away our 14-14 hawk. They scoop. Wow. Good game. What a battle. A battle of a battle of two giants. 93 Mythic. I think we'll probably call it there for the day. If you enjoyed today's video and you are hyped for foundations as much as I am, then uh I hope you like the, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, all that stuff. It's gonna be a fun next couple of weeks diving into all the new stuff. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.